There are three categories of people, very rich, very poor, and very handsome, that looking to make scenes every night somewhere else. That's the three categories that the Gemara describes. You decide in which one of them you belong. So now, the Gemara gives an example. A poor person died, he came to Hashem, to the tribe. Hashem said, why didn't you follow the Torah? Why didn't you learn Torah? What's going on with you? How could I learn? I was so poor. I'm running to find a job every day. I cannot bring you money to pay my children tuition. How can I be righteous? I have to work like a slave. Right away, Hashem turned the VCR on. I should say the DVD or the new thing. What's the new thing? Blu-ray. Hashem has a good Blu-ray over there. Don't worry. High definition. High definition. You even feel your heartbeat at the time you made the scenes. Over there, they have a stereo system. You know? So anyway... So Hashem turns the, the movie on, and he shows you Hillel Azaken, the president of Israel, so poor he couldn't afford to pay admission to enter the yeshiva to learn Torah. It used to cost money. So he froze almost to death on the, on the roof of the yeshiva when it was very heavy snow there in the north of Israel, in the Galilee, just not to miss one shiur. And in the end, the rabbis turned the fire on for him on Shabbat to save his life. They say he deserved for us to be mechalel Shabbat for him. Pikuach nefesh. Right away after you see Hillel, how poor he was, and he never missed one day of Torah, you say, Hashem, I'm sorry for the nonsense I just said. Case is closed. Then, if you're very wealthy, what do you say? You say, Hashem, I have 65,000 employees. Where, how exactly you wanted me to sit and learn a few hours? Every second, SMS, beeper, telephone, another telephone. I have, no, I have no time to go to the bathroom. You want me to sit and learn Torah? Right away, they turn the VCR on, the DVD, and who do they see? A person named Elazar ben Kharsom. He was Kohen Gadol for 11 years in Bet HaMikdash. But before he became Kohen Gadol, his father's name was Kharsom. Kharsom was the richest guy in the land, billionaire, top. How billionaire? Bill Gates was a puppet compared to him. How do I know? Because the Gemara described what he left for his son. He left him 1,000 huge boats full of merchandise in the ocean. 1,000 boats full of any good that you can think of. Rugs, Persian rugs, diamonds, gold, vegetables, food, you name it. That, that was only the tip. And 1,000 cities full of markets, real estate. Thousands of thousands of thousands of people were paying him rent and taxes. His father left it for his son, Kharsom, Elazar. Kharsom left it for his son Elazar. Guess what he did? He took a bag full of flowers. Flour is bread, you need to eat. It's a little money to put, you know, for the way. He left everything to the workers. Say, do whatever you want with that. I don't have time to run this em empire. I'm going to learn Torah. I'm not interested in all this. What? It's going to kill me. Go here, a meeting over there. Export, import, IRS coming, audit. I don't have time for this. Let me go learn Torah. He takes a bag and he walks. While he's going to yeshiva to learn Torah, he's passing through a city that belongs to his father. But nobody knows that he's the new boss. I don't, remember, there was no internet. You Google the name and right away you see his picture. It was different days. Different days. Father left it to his son. They never saw the son. A young guy in his 20s. He walks with a bag of flour, simple clothes. He goes to yeshiva. Then they pull him over. They say, hey, where do you think you're going? Don't you know there's an order from one of the managers in this town today? Everybody has to come and volunteer to make a new road? There was rocks on the road. How they used to make roads? They used to bring people. They move the rocks to the side. They try to make it as straight as possible for the horses to pass by. That's how it was. You have to work. Join us. Now, what would happen today if something like this happened? Right away, he pulled his ID. 
hey, get out of here before it's going to be the last day you ever breathe. <laughs> Just get out of here. No, he was humble. He said, listen, I'm in a way to learn Torah. I said, we all want to learn Torah. What, are you the only one who wants to learn Torah? Come help us, that we can all go learn Torah. So he had some money. He took some of the money, he bribed them. Here, take, you take, you take. You work for me. Here is for you, here is for you. Let me go learn Torah. And he went and learned Torah. After the rich person see such a thing, he said, Hashem, I'm very sorry that I even say something. I didn't know there are people like this in your world. The case is closed. And those who were handsome, they say, Hashem, how do you want me to be righteous? Uh, look at my phone book. 500 phone numbers. I'm, I'm confused. Sometimes I call a girl, I call her with a different name. I forgot. <laughs> with all my sins. Hashem say, oh yeah? The VCR goes on. Yosef Atzadik walks. All the ladies in Egypt with their nice cotton, Egyptian cotton, clothes, outfit, falling on the street just to see his face. Because he was so, so handsome, they never saw such a handsome man like this. And young. They said, look at this guy, he came to Egypt, he's walking by the palace of Potiphar, you never saw such a thing. He walks, they all fall on the floor, and he was like this, not to make a scene. Finally he gets to the house, one of the most four beautiful ladies ever live. She's tempting him. And he's fighting with his Yetzer Hara. He, has no, he doesn't have his father, his family. Try think about the test here. In his 17 years old, whatever he was. Very difficult. The Midra said that one time Eshet Potiphar, she couldn't stop talking about him. She's married. But her husband is busy with the, with the, with the kingdom of Egypt. So she talks to her friend as they're playing cards. What, what handsome servant we have. So they all tell her, are you crazy? How handsome he can be? You don't stop talking about him. So the rich people used to eat etrogim. How do you say etrog in English? Citrum? Huh? Citrum? With N in the end? Citron? Sounds like Citroen, French car. <laughs> all right, Citron. So, they, they, in the old days, used to be very sweet and juicy. What happened to the CDs? <laughs> this CD wants a customer already. <laughs> anyway, so they used to eat Sidron, so they cut it. As soon as he walked through the door, the Midrash say they were so shocked that they cut their fingers off. That's how handsome he was. So they show the guy, Yosef Atzadik, what's going on, and he walks like this in the street. So the guy says, Hashem, here, take my phone book. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no further questions. No further complaints.